All righty. All righty. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Joe. All right. Yeah. Appreciate the suggestion, Joe. All right. So let's break it down top down. All right. So daily time frame last week, um, you guys know we were bullish. So if we go up to the weekly time frame, we had the weekly imbalance that we were looking for delivered, right? So the last two weeks we had what? We've had a bullish bias on the weekly time frame. Was that um, a bias that has served us well? Absolutely, right? Open low, high close, open low, high close. And yesterday or last week rather was a decently good technical week with a nice Tuesday low of the week, Thursday high of the week. And just like I've shown you on previous Saturdays when I do reviews, right? Those are things you wanna start journaling, taking note of. So, and again, you guys are eventually going to be doing your own weekly outlooks, right? Many of you guys have been with me all year. I'm sure you guys were already doing your own weekly outlook, knowing what to look for, uh, why you're looking for it, and able to sort that out on your own steam, right? Which is our goal. So weekly fair value gap traded up into last week. We've then traded softer off that. Let's drop down to the daily chart, refine this further. So now refining that weekly inefficiency here to the daily time frame. we've traded higher. We cleared out the equal highs here. In here. So I'll draw on liquidity beautifully traded into breakaway gap here called real time, bullish order block, real time, bam, fair value gap. There you go. We have failed to reach mid gap, right? So we failed to reach consequent encroachment. That's significant in my analysis. So the fact that we failed to get up to mid gap here is influential. And then when we retreated off that and closed near the low, another week close on Friday. So today I am leaning bearish to neutral. Neutral on the higher time frame again because it's not for our payroll week. But the reason I am leaning a bit more bearish is because we failed to reach mid gap and then we broke down. And then you'll see on the lower time frame uh, what are the factors I'm considering. So looking at these two blue lines here, just so you guys know what key levels I'm working with. Daily fair value gap. That's the rectangle that we traded up into and we failed to reach mid gap and we broke down decisively. This is a volume imbalance here that you won't see if you don't have set toggled. Toggle set. Now you see this volume imbalance. I like to use those. So I'm extending that through. And again, that's going to be an influential level uh, here for me today. Going over to E-mini S&P, uh, again, trading into its all-time high. Now trading lower off that as well. All right, let's drop it down into the hourly time frame. All right, so on Thursday, again, nice technical week last week, as I said, Tuesday, low of the week, Thursday, high of week. Nice, nice delivery, again, in line with our bias. Strong breakdown on Thursday, tried to rally here, failed, right? So we traded, bumped the buy stops here, but then we did what? We immediately broke down. So now where are we starting to see, to see the displacement on, right? This is how you start to frame order flow and market structure on your hourly time frame. Where's the displacement in favor of now? The upside or the downside? To the downside, right? Displacement here. Market trades higher. We try to get above the high and then it does what? Decisively breaks down again. So all the animation, all the speed is on what the downside. That's a more basic way to identify order flow, but it's a down and dirty quick way to identify, okay, where's, what's the likely direction going to be for this session and the next session based off the hourly time frame? And this is what I'm looking at. So we bumped the buy side here, failed to fill this gap, broke down, shift the market structure. This is your breaker here. Fair value gap breaker. We trade up into that. We're selling off. So, so far on the hourly time frame, the market is bearish. And if we zoom out, Get some more clarity here. Why would it be advantageous for the market to trade lower? Well, we've been calling the market higher. We're right? expecting it to keep repricing into these premium levels that we've been calling. But once we reach those premium levels, it's reasonable to expect a measure retracement. Again, I'm not trying to call it top in NASDAQ. Right? I'm not trying to do that, especially on an election year. But it's reasonable to see it retrace, right? With the signatures I just covered here. Relatively equal lows. Anyone that's long, where's their stop loss going to be? Right? And you want to start thinking like that because it's going to help you frame setups every single day. So relatively equal lows down here um, have my interest if bearish order flow remains, right? And what should that look like? Up close candles respected, up close candles respected, up close candles respected. And I want to see that maintain, right? Just like when we were bullish, what do we want to see? Down close candles support price the whole way up, right? So pretty straightforward stuff. That's an easy way to determine um, institutional order flows. A lot of other tools you can use as well. Um, like algorithmic reference points, such as new week opening gap, new day opening gap. And that's why I do have them on another template because I am using, again, those key levels to measure and gauge institutional order flow at key levels. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. 
Um, this is that daily volume imbalance, again, those two blue lines. And what I'm going to drop here is the hourly fair value gap. That's going to be a key level for me here today. So that fair value gap, I'm going to be watching that there. And then going over to ES, here we can see same thing, decides to break down, trades higher, clears out the buy side, then we break down. And look at all of this sell side here on S&P as we're starting to show weakness already, right? Up close candles, all being respected, break down, breaking structure to the downside with a fair value gap, right? So as long as that fair value gap holds on S&P, I know we have some S&P P traders in the group. So you guys do want to watch that hourly imbalance again on one of my other monitors here. I do uh, have again, S&P and then all these key levels that I'm taking your attention to. So for ES, watch that fair value gap, see if that can send us lower down into the sell side there at 57.68. Animation through that takes us into 57.54 and then 57.45s if we continue to accelerate. So that's the business for SP. Going back over to NASDAQ. This would be another key uh, sell side liquidity pool. And then this would be previous week's low. So as I mentioned, we do want to get in the habit, especially early on of labeling the liquidity that we're using. So this would be sell side liquidity, previous week's low, right? Just want to keep uh, reinforcing that because again, the only way you're going to get to a point of trusting, having confidence is just doing these exercises and watching it deliver uh, like we do here every day. Let me take that off. 15 minute time frame. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust that hourly imbalance here to the 15 minute time frame. I like this one to work with better because it's a little bigger. So let me change that to M15 FG. So I'll watch this for value gap here. All right, so market open here in about two and a half minutes. Right now, I'm going to go into the trading layout with the 15, 5, and 1, but that's the top down analysis, right? That's how I frame out my key levels, how I come to a bias what I'm looking at on the daily, hourly, 15, five, and then one minute, right? And it's again, the top down perspective that gives you that clarity, that gives you that precision, right? Because the daily is going to be more important than the hourly. The hourly is going to be more influential than the 15 minute, right? The 15 minutes is going to be more influential than the five and one minute. So you want that hierarchy of importance to be reflected in your analysis. I want to go ahead and get the, like I said, I have this on another template, but the new week opening gap is going to be influential uh, for today's trading. So I'll label that. So Mondays, generally the market will look to seek fair value. And again, fair value is defined algorithmically by um, where we closed the previous day, um, new week opening gaps, new day opening gaps, regular trading hours gap, right? So new week opening gap here is going to be an influential uh, level for today's trading. And that thing's always popping up in the wrong place. I'm just going to drop a line on the settlement as we know. Um, as we approach 930, generally, the market's going to want to start to gravitate towards that orange line that I have labeled regular trading hours settlement price. Alrighty, so 9.30 open here in about five seconds. All right, so we're opening here at 9.30. This is the 9.30 open. So the difference between that open 
that settlement, that's the regular trading hours gap. There's not enough range uh, from where we're at currently to new week opening gap for me uh, presently to take a trade on. There's nothing in the structure for me to see as of right now. So again, generally at 9.30, the market likes to gravitate to towards that settlement. Again, we, we don't always need a complete closure of the gap. We don't always need it to trade to the settlement. One of the initial things that I generally look for is at least a return to mid-gap or 50% of that regular trading. And that's one of the things that I'm studying in the first 30 minutes of trading um, because how the market trades there, if it can or if it can't, that all gives me insight as to how the day uh, should unfold from a order flow standpoint, direction, and that helps me frame all of that with the tools that I use to read price action, uh, like I teach you guys re reading institutional order flow. All right, so there's that new week opening gap that we were looking for, 930. And again, the market's gravitating towards that settlement, right? So can that be scalped? I guess. Um, again, just not, not much for me to do inside that range. So from the open, there's mid gap, new week opening gap, and we'll see if we can get a full gap closure uh, here into the settlement. Right. So as I said, generally, that's a trade for me. Generally, I'm in here trading this on Mondays. We've done it many, many times already. Called it here live again today. Generally, this is a tradable event for me. Um, but because it's so close to 930 open, it didn't personally give me a framework to get in. I had to uh, pass up on what was a fairly decent run. <clears throat> All right. So now overshooting that settlement. Taking out the pre-market highs. So looking at the 15 minute, we have London London highs here for buy side. So initially my bias is bearish on the hourly based off what I have in terms of information at that time. But then as we get closer to 930, I see we're opening with a gap down. We have new week opening gap nested inside that opening range, regular trading hours gap. That's going to be, again, a strong algorithmic draw. Um, it would have had to have given me a better framework to trade it, though, not just open at 930 and rip up there. But what this is doing, again, is building your experience, right? Because next Monday, we're going to see the same thing. And the next Monday after that, we're going to be doing the same thing. And then in six months from now, a year from now, you're going to be seeing it all on your own steam. Right. So the buy side there at the 2247 level is the London highs. Um, again, that 15 minute fair value gap was key for me. So maybe if we would have traded higher, hit new week opening gap, maybe mid gap then broke down. That would have given me some inclination to then trade in line with that hourly time frame and look for lower prices. But so far, what have we seen? Nothing bearish. So initially I was looking for lower prices based off the hourly chart. But again, that's just an initial bias. I have to be flexible with what the market's giving me which is why I was telling you guys to be in the stream, generally non-farm payroll weeks, not doing a, too much of being stuck in a daily bias. I like to be fluid. Cause like I said, these types of setups happen all day long, every day, these repricings to these key levels at time of day, right? Everything's time-based 930. The market gravitates to this, right? A lot of times people don't really hear the timing aspect, right? And that's one of the most important things to what I'm doing. It's not just price. It's time that then influences what price should do. Again, one of the important things with having confirmation is, yes, I'm bearish on the hourly or I was pre-market, but there was nothing for me to go short on, right? There's nothing on institutional order flow that would allow me to go short um, with how I teach you guys to trade. And in fact, I was actually looking for higher because of the algorithm indicating to me it wants to trade up into that. All right, so let's go back out to the hourly time frame, see where we're at. And again, something else I'll even uh, throw out there as well. It may not even look at coming down here, right? This may be the low of the week and we just keep ripping. That's absolutely a possibility, which is why I want to be flexible uh, in my analysis. But again, it doesn't mean that uh, targets aren't being called. The market can't be seen where it's going. It's just not delivering within my initial framework. So right now showing initial strength. And again, we may not get down into here. That's why being fluid, uh, being adaptable in your bias is important and not changing it, not being unconfident, but knowing how to adjust.
right? Knowing how to take in new information and adjust what the market's giving you. All right, so so far we stabbed down into this fair value gap here. Failed to even get to uh, midpoint, so the market's still indicating it's it's bullish. So now we have that London high up here. And then again, the blue line from here to here, that range, that's also that daily volume imbalance that we're digging into. So several factors for the market to drop into this. If I was in a trade because it's a Monday, I would have had a good amount scaled off at the settlement. So that's why it was just a 25 handle, uh, 30 handle run for me. That's why personally, I wouldn't be able to get positioned on something like that. But the easy trade, the the setup that's going to be there almost every single Monday is the repricing into the regular trading hours gap and new week opening gap. But again, you see there wasn't a lot of range for me to work with there. All right, so I'm going to see how they trade here at London Highs. Right, there you go, London Highs delivered. All right, so now we traded through London highs. See if we can accelerate. And if we do, then we even have the buy side back here that formed on uh, Friday's trading. So far, indicating it's really bullish. We traded to and through the opening range gap. Fair value gap, we dropped down into it. Didn't even come close to filling it. All right, now we're trading to and through London high. So nothing's bearish here, right? Everything is still, still bullish pointing to higher prices. Oh, for the risk side of things, didn't touch on that. Got got too much into the analysis. Uh, forgot to touch on the most important part, the risk. Uh, so for today, I, I won't be risking more than a half a percent of my account. And you'll see why at the end of the stream, I think I'm up eight and a half, maybe 9% this month on this account that you guys see me trade live every day. And why a half percent? How'd you come up with that number, Dylan? Great question. Half a percent, because if I'm up eight and a half percent, and today's the last day of the trading month. One of the things I always emphasize to you guys throughout the entire mentorship, throughout all the time you guys are with me, is you got to know how to close out a month, right? Because there's nothing worse than doing numbers on a really good month, which August price action has been treating us very well. Um, there's nothing worse than, like I said, doing good numbers and then the last week fumbling the bag and giving it all back. Um, I've done that before. I've done it actually many times where I've had an awesome month and then something happens on that last that last week of the trading month. And I would just undo progress that I worked the whole month for. And once you do that enough times, it becomes demoralizing and you don't want to keep doing that. So now I've, I've done what? I've reflected, journaled, everything I tell you guys to do, recognize, okay, where am I going wrong? And then I implement habits in place that don't allow me to make those mistakes. And that's what, again, trading requires a lot of responsibility. So it requires that journaling, that reflection. And that's what I've had to do to not only make money, but keep it and be consistent month to month. So you see with that mindset, it's hard to lose. You're up eight and a half percent, not willing to risk over a half percent today. So how am I going to close out the month of September? Green as can be. And like I said, I'll show you those statistics here after the, uh, after the live trading. So again, it's just Monday non-farm payroll, but because of uh, it being non-farm payroll week, I'm looking to get paid Monday going into Tuesday. So that's why I'm here actively hunting setups with you guys, but I also want to touch on the risk side of things and the why behind it, right? That's what we're here to show you guys, how we find consistency and how you can, again, adopt habits to also reach consistency as well. Leon, done for today.
Would you go along the uh, along the fair value gap? Nice trade, man. <clears throat> Yeah, that retracement here into that fair value gap. Also a new week opening gap overlapping with that level for support, using it to get above it, support, expanding higher. That's why I had confidence to look for uh, London highs. And I think as... Uh, a few guys were pointing out with the settlement from where we open at 9.30 to where we settle. Um, guys, we're discussing that. I guess ICT was saying 70% of the time mid-gap of the opening range gap is repriced too. And I guess you guys were noticing, I think you guys said some observation to the chat that it happened every single day last week. And that's awesome, right? Those are things you want to start to log, take note of because... You guys will see that's the framework for having consistent setups, right? It's seeing where the algorithm is going to reprice to and why it should do it. And the great thing is it's doing it all on a scheduled delivery. So again, I'm, I'm observing here how we trade above the London buy side liquidity. Seventy percent during the first thirty minutes of trading. Yeah, opening range. There you go. All right, so I'm watching order flow in here, watching this down close candle. It's going to be influential for me. Now, s and is looking weak. <clears throat> Going over to ES, s and starting to sell off. So if NASDAQ can start to show weakness as well, look for repricing into these lows if it starts to follow suit. You go check out the Dow. Yeah, so Dow's heavily decoupled, Dow's selling off hard. So decoupled markets at the open as well, something else to, something else to be considered. Uh, Daniel S and P didn't take London high. Yeah, no. Yeah. Weakness, weakness and Dow S and P influential, but right now we have a uh, deep coupled market, so I'd want to see them become symmetrical. Yeah, uh, Leon already seeing it. Why I'm dropping? Yeah, yeah, Mister Dow. Yeah, yeah, Dow's always got a mind of its own. So so far. Uh, everything remains bullish in the order flow down close candle. We trade into it, find support.
And then again, if institutional order flow remains bullish, uh, we have the equal highs here from Friday's PM session. And so far, again, everything's pointing higher. Nothing's pointing to bearishness yet. All right, NASDAQ running out the high here. S&P unable to do so. So now we have an SMT at the high on the one, one minute basis. So again, still observing in here, there's nothing to go short off of so far. Down close candle, we've traded down into it, still showing support, right? So just basic uh, fundamental level, elementary level institutional order flow is still bullish, right? Not even pulling out the advanced stuff. Our down close candle supporting price, yes, everything is bullish. So with that in mind, uh, if you're still long or if you did go long, where would you trail a stop down here? Why? Because it's a down close candle with a fair value gap. So, and what you'll notice also, and this isn't random, that if we break through that, that would be my trigger to tell me we're likely going lower. So you see having a comprehensive understanding of knowing how to read the markets tells you where to trail a stop loss, lets you hold winners. You're not gonna be fearful closing out at 20 handles, 30 handles. That's where you start, but you're not gonna stay there forever. You're gonna grow into a bigger trader. This is how you do it. You have to understand how to read the markets, where would a stop trail, but that's a derivative of knowing how to read institutional order flow. So if you're still long or if you're worried to get some position, stop would be down here. Because if it trades through that, I don't want to be long. But if we stay above that, then that's telling me what's still going higher. So how do you trail a stop and leave a runner? It's knowing how to read order flow. And also it's helpful in preventing um, unnecessary losing trades. What do I mean by unnecessary losing trades? Like you guys know, for example, if I know what I'm looking for, I'll get into a 10 second, 15 second chart and get my entry. Imagine if I would have done that here prematurely. Oh, well, I'm bearish and I just want to wait for that pattern I look for. Oh, there's that fair value gap. Let me go short. But nothing's confirmed bearishness on the one 15 or five minute chart. So you see that would just be an entry pattern. But patterns aren't what work. It's understanding the narrative, why the market should draw to a certain level. And then if you can confirm it with institutional order flow, then you have high probability set up. But until I have those factors aligned for me, then I don't have high probability for my uh, protocols, for my rules in trading. <clears throat> and then when I see the markets decoupled, that also makes me more patient as well. Real sloppy in here. And then Dow still dropping. So we still have heavily, heavily decoupled markets. Dow's making lower lows. NASDAQ's making higher highs. Yeah, S&P using uh, new week opening gap as support perfectly. Mm 
me go ahead and show you guys. And this is exactly why um, you guys want to have a template of these things, because it's going to be really helpful as you learn to read the markets like I'm sharing here. All these key levels are going to give you more insight. So this is why I have a template with this on it. So this is, again, new week opening gap for S&P, where we close on Friday, where we open on Sunday. And you may not see that as, as an influential level in this time frame, but look at what happens when we drop down to the one minute chart. Beautiful gap theory, right? If we're bullish, the market's going to get above a gap, drop down, support perfectly, drops down. How far can it go? Low end into a week opening gap, find support. So when I'm reading these things, this tells me what? Nothing's bearish in the order flow yet. Stay either looking for higher prices or stay neutral. But if we break down through this level, decisively use it as resistance, now that starts to tell me a different story. Right? So you see how you can start to come to a conclusion as to what the market should do as you have these key institutional reference points and proper training on how to read institutional order flow. So again, that's something you want to watch for S&P. I think that's what my man uh, Leon is making reference to for the new week opening gap. Right? And again, I'm looking at all these levels throughout my trading because it gives you that additional element of confirmation and trust and knowing what you're looking for. <clears throat> all right, so NASDAQ now making a slightly higher high, but failing to displace through it. But I don't, again, trade patterns. So I'm not looking at this as a three drives pattern. Oh, there's that pattern I look for. It, sh it should be bearish now. I need to see other things support it. But if I see a three drives, what is a three drives? Well, every time we make a higher high, every time it makes a high and drops, people are selling short and putting a buy stop here. So they're stopped out. Sell short, put a buy stop, stopped out. So what a three drives pattern is, the narrative it communicates to me is it keeps knocking out shorts, knocking out shorts, knocking out shorts. So then when the real move happens, uninformed money isn't short anymore. And they've been taken out of their short position by smart money. But again, it's not a pattern trading thing. Look at this here. Look at three drives, three drives, three drives. Oh, there's that pattern. It should drop now. No. Again, you still have to understand all these other things that we touch on. It's not just the pattern aspect. But when I see that pattern start to develop, I'm reading into it like, okay, are we seeing distribution above London highs and then breaking down? And again, it gives me confidence to look for the things that I look for. So, so far, uh, coming out of the gate at 9.30, aggressive repricing higher. And then from there, we've just been chopping. Oh, and then uh, as we wait till 10 a.m., hopefully the market start to loosen up as we get into the uh, 10 o'clock hour. <clears throat> I get what I'm looking for. I may look to take a low risk short back into the range. 
<clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and use that 30 second fair value gap if it gives it to me. All right, so I wanted to come in here and tag that limit inside that 30 second FVG. All right. So going on a low risk short here. All right, it's gonna look to take a profit there at the settlement. And then below the settlement, we have a new week opening gap at the two two hundred level for another partial. All right, so going in with light size today here again, the most important factor for me uh, going into today is more the risk management side of things. Like I said, just keeping uh, what I've worked hard for in September. If I can pad the stats a bit more, I'm willing to do it, but I'm not willing to do it at the expense of losing more than I made. <clears throat> so trading up into that one minute fair value gap. And then from here, I want to see it nosedive. And then how we trade will determine whether or not I leave a runner into these equal lows here. And this is also the first fair value gap that forms at 930. So it's also going to be a key influential level there. So there's a lot of reasons why I take the trades I take, how I confirm an order flow, what it is I look for. And like I said, I do the best I can to give you guys as much detail as I can real time. Right, so this is the bearish breaker here. So using the breaker fair value gap model. Again, I've been using that a lot with you guys recently. Label bearish breaker. No breaker, fair value gap. And then again, just you guys can keep in mind the institutional reference points I'm using. We have regular trading hours gap and new week opening gap. And that's going to be my draw, my draw liquidity. And if we start to accelerate through that, I'll determine whether or not I'll leave the last two contracts to run down into here. But first, we'll see how we trade there. So from the entry to where we're at, that's 20 handles. If you're a newer trader, uh, like I always coach you guys, that's more than a day job's going to pay you. So that is a good place to take profit. <clears throat> and it's about getting comfortable in those base hits. Again, more advanced traders. Again, you guys know what you're doing. So you don't need to uh, hear my suggestions as much. But for developing traders, again, like to reinforce the uh, consistency aspect of just Paying the trader at levels that makes sense, low hanging fruit, and over time growing again into a more advanced understanding. So now I'm going to put the stop trim risk just slightly. I'm not going to move the stop a whole bunch, but in my mind, I don't want to see us overtake this entire breaker now. So I still want to give the trade enough room to breathe and let it get down into my targets, but I also want to trim some risk off the high. <clears throat> So now the former, take this breaker off here. All right. So it was a bullish order block here. I want to see now act as a bearish mitigation block. Bam. Isn't that just so good? Mitigation block, I want to see a stay below that. There you go. Fill that other limit order for me. Thank you very much. And then I like how we left that gap open. I want to see us stay heavy. And then I'll take off the rest of the trade uh, down here. All right, now I'm going to trail the stop here to break even. You guys know how it goes. Now, worst case scenario, we make money, right? <laughs> Easiest money we made all meet week. Come on, Dylan. This is too easy for us. <clears throat> 
<laughs> so there's your uh, current new week opening gap. If you see these levels can be used dynamically, use it as a target for the long side, but it didn't give me a framework to trade. What I always tell you guys, don't worry. There's going to be more trade setups, more opportunities. Be patient. Took your attention to the three drives pattern, touched on why it wasn't a pattern, right? Because here there's the three drives, but here there's narrative. We took out London highs. I told you I want to see what how we trade above London highs. We did what? Three drives pattern above buy side. So I got a comment, but I don't um because I, I don't want you guys to think I'm just taking these trades out of the blue. But if you've genuinely taken time to study what I've taught, you'll see the same things. Buy side liquidity to discount, either in efficiency or sell side liquidity. All my trades have the same things. So if you've taken the time to study what I teach, how I look at the markets, it's not going to be a mystery why I'm taking these trades. It's simple. Buy side to sell side, premium to discount, and I confirm it with institutional order flow. All my trades are the same. Mitigation block. So from the breaker, bam, mitigation block, bam. And again, it's understanding market maker models, institutional order flow that gives you the confidence to trust these things. So I know how far the, well, I mean, I say I know I have a high degree of confidence as to where the market should retrace. How far can it retrace here? I don't want to see it overtake the mitigation block. So how do you have tight stop losses? How do you know when to trail a stop loss? I get that question very frequently. I'm showing you guys every single day. Every single day we're live, I show you how I'm entering, how I manage the stop and all the components behind that. Gave you guys here, this is the first fair value gap that forms at 9.30, so that's going to be a key level. And then we also have the settlement price and the week opening gap that I want to target. Can I get down into here? Yes, but I don't want to have to either put myself in a position where either the market gets down here and I get paid or it doesn't get down there and I don't get paid at all. So the way I disarm myself and make it easy is, well, let me just get paid here at low-hanging fruit. Right. Like I said, um, you know, 40 handles on a Monday. Like I said, that's 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 decent, right? For non-farm payroll week, that's that's fairly decent. Um, and then we'll see if it can run more. But I don't want to put myself in a position where either it gets all the way down here and pays me, or I'm gonna take nothing. Right. That that's not a mindset I, I really like I like to cultivate. Right, let me get back to the trade execution. Should we make this like a circus and ask you guys to do W's in the chat for me? <laughs> I always find it so funny when they do that. <laughs> it's like, what, you've, you've never won before? <laughs> All right, so I like how they left some of this imbalance open. So I want to see this thing stay heavy and start to accelerate into the 930, uh, into the 930 lows. So I want to see that right there, big black down close candles. Look at S&P, uh, whoops, look what S&P is doing. You see how it continuously draws to that new week opening gap? Very influential, important level. And we see the same thing here for NASDAQ, right? You see how it keeps referring to it? That's all you need to make money, right? Down here, this is just extra. If I get down here, then I'll just be paid a bit more. But just from here to here, that pays me um, all I need for a non-farm payroll trading session. <clears throat> So what I want to see us do now is trade down through new week opening gap, get below it, close below it, use it as resistance, sell off. So another thing I want to address, because I know I also get questions about how do you know when to hold a runner? I don't know I want to hold a runner yet until I see the price leg develop. Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, what I mean by that is I'm reading into institutional order flow constantly. So I want to see is, are these gaps able to get left open? Are we still displacing through the lows? You see here with this mitigation block I gave you, we couldn't even get up to 50% here. We trade down, we trade up into the mitigation block, right? That's permissible. That's how far it can retrace. How far can it retrace? Know your PD arrays. Understand market maker model. We trade up into it, mitigation block. We fail to get to mid uh, mean threshold. 
So that tells me what it's weak. Okay, great. Now do we trade below the weak opening gap? Close below it. Do we use it as resistance? If yes, that tells me what it's still weak. So what does that tell me? Hold the runner down to the lows. But what happens if we start just coloring over all these levels and trading higher? Well, then I'll probably save the stop loss and just close it out and a, a little bit of profit. So it's just a matter of knowing how to read the order flow, having confidence in what you're looking for. So now I'll close candle. This should do what? Send price lower. Ideally, we leave some of that gap open, right? Because if we leave some of that gap, gap open, then it's going to drop down into there like lightning. And that's the delivery I want to be a part of. If I don't see these signatures, then I'll probably take most of the trade off just in here and be content with that. Share with you guys the trades that I go about enjoying my day. But as I read the market, as I get more information with each candle, I can trust it's going to want to come down into these levels. Hopefully that makes sense. Hope you guys are able to see how all this comes together. Right, let me put another buy limit right here. So I'm just going to layer my buy limits. <clears throat> see, leaving some of that imbalance open. Why am I holding for runners? It's Is it giving me the signatures I teach you to look for in order flow? Absolutely. <clears throat> Have we, looking at the new week opening gap, get down below it, we trade up into it. Where do the body stop? Consequent encroachment. I want to see a stable of this wick. I want to just see it stay heavy in here. If not, I'll just look to start closing out. There we go. All right, so still heavy, imbalance, unable to get filled. Wick, consequent encroachment, unable to get traded to. Now I want to see us nose dive down into here. And you notice what time that entry is happening inside the macro window. So it's not just price, it's also time. <clears throat> <clears throat> so looking to close out the 72 point run here on a Monday and I'll, I'll just be content with that. Well, Dylan, your hourly bias is bearish and you have all those equal lows below market price that you're looking for. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm just here to get paid. Once I get paid, I'm, I'm, I'm not here for flexing on social media. <clears throat> all right. There's your 930 lows. Now we'll wait for this last limit order here to get tagged. And then I'll just trail that down into here. Man, s and is such a mess. Look how unstructured it is. NASDAQ, much cleaner. All right, so trail the stop down in, uh, down here. If, if it stops me out here, that that's cool. All right, that takes me out, folks. Equal lows here. Paid by 1020 on a Monday. So we still have equal lows. The bias is still bearish for any of you guys that, you guys that are short. Maybe you want to hold for a monster run. Uh, the draw still lower. 
Uh, so you guys know, and well, well, depending on how long you've been with me, you guys should know how to read institutional order flow. So if you are still short, if you are still looking for lower prices, uh, in my mind, everything's valid. I'm not willing to hold it anymore. I'm, I'm content with that here on a Monday, getting paid, calling it out all live for you guys. Every turning point, why I'm getting short, why I'm expecting every single retracement. And then we walked it like a dog, right? Breaker, fair value gap. Come here, boy. Mitigation block, fail to get to mid. How far can it retrace? Mitigation block. We break down, new week opening gap. I tell you we need to do what? Close below it. Use it as what? Resistance. Real time. Bam, nose dives into the sell side. All right, easiest money we made all week or what? How are we feeling, guys? <clears throat> Beautiful, Dylan. Glad you enjoyed it, Julia. Hope we're learning. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, what's going on, brother? Why are you crying? You missed the short like my man, uh, Tyler. <laughs> uh, Tyler, I missed that short. How'd you miss the short, brother? That's your model. Uh, the run on buy side, fair value gap breaker. That that's your model, my man. But it's all right, Tyler. We'll have time to uh, confidence. Okay, amen. And remember what we discussed over the weekend in the premiere session. Um, how are we going to develop that confidence? Well, you just saw me do it live. But the only way you're going to trust it is not watching me do it live. Not watch ICT do it live. It's going to come from you going into your charts after. Uh, the session, when you get free time and gen genuinely annotating these things. So this is for everyone. I was getting asked a lot on journaling. So let me go and do that here. Take any questions we got. Go into my trade Zella. I'm going to share with you guys my statistics for this month, which won't reflect this trade. So now we're probably looking at nine, maybe nine and a half percent. Uh, depending on where I was, I think it was like eight and a half, 8.7 percent. I think I packed on another maybe quarter, half a percent here. No, nothing crazy. But again, it's a Monday. So just keeping it light. Plenty more opportunities. I banked in the Asian session yesterday on a funded account that I'm trading. So I'm here getting paid. You guys know you guys know the business. All right. For, for the journaling side of things, how do you journal this? Let's say this is your model, right? Let's say you're looking at the breaker fair value gap. That's been really the flavor of the month, right? The past Two to three weeks. How many times have I traded that model live in front of you guys? I'd say five to six times this month and getting absolutely paid like no one else is doing it. <laughs> Breaker, fair value gap. So that if that's your model, you want to label these things, right? And you want to take time to do it. It's going to take you 30, 45 minutes to do every day. It's all right. Get comfortable. If you want to be a professional trader, you're going to be looking at charts for a while. Uh, so you might as well just get used to it. So FEG, breaker. Let's say that's your model. Well, the way I would go about journaling it is you want to journal, okay, where would the entry occur? I used a 30 second. I wanted to make sure to get in it. So I personally used a 30 second entry, but this would be the entry price. Where would the stop loss go? I put the stop loss above the body candle here. So you'd measure, okay, oh, shit. from where I entered, what's the stop loss? Okay. 20 handle stop. So a 20 handle stop for a 70 handle take profit. That's one to three, one to four. Not good enough for those Instagram guys <laughs> that do the one to 200 R every single day, but it's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. I, I'm just joking. I have to. <laughs> so fair value gap, that would be your entry. Dylan, we this. can't see your screen. Ah, appreciate you unmuting, brother. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm sure you guys were following me along anyway. I know we just watched it. I appreciate the heads up, brother. Where's my team at? <clears throat> All right. So for the journaling side of things, right? You'd put the entry, the stop loss. What this helps you do is then determine, okay, from the entry, how long did it spend at the entry? Not very long. How long did it take to run down into the discount targets? Also not that long. So you want to start getting a feel for that. What does a good trade look like? You probably don't know because you haven't done this. So as you start to do this, you're going to start having confidence, something magical happens where now you can trust it because you've seen it so many times. And this model forms every single day. Look, just look how many times we've traded it live. And there's times where I'm not trading live, right? There's times where maybe I got something to do in my personal life and I'm not able to trade it, right? But you see this model repeats consistently. Like I said, I'm still bearish. I'm still looking for downside targets, but that that's good enough for me today. I'm happy with that. And then you would, from here, from the entry, stop loss. Okay, how, how, many, how much heat would you have taken on the trade? 
How long did it take to run from entry to targets? And now that's the last part, targeting. Let's say you're just starting out. Well, what I tell you guys, if, if you're just starting out, well, 20 handles, like I said, that's a good starting point. That's that's motivating. It's rewarding. It's easy to take these trades every single day with 20 handles. And then you study. Okay, how long did it take to run 20 handles? Okay, sweet. Now let me see what a 40 handle run looks like. All right, now 40 handle runs down into here. And then you, you can label it, right? You can put time into it. So you can put 20 handle run. Uh-oh. And then 40, right? And then over time, you're going to study what a... 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 handle run looks like. And pretty soon you're going to have the confidence to hold for the low of the day and just let it keep running. Uh, but because I'm trading live in front of an audience, it's also a little more stressful. I'll, I'll admit that to you guys as well. So that's why I'm comfortable getting paid. I don't need to uh, keep holding for all that. But like I said, that's just a simple exercise that you can do every single day to trust why you're holding a trade. So you'd start at the 15 minute. What do we do? We framed buy side. And you guys know, right? If I'm bearish today, if I want to go short, what have I been saying all year long? What do I need to see first? The market needs to trade up into buy side liquidity or a premium inefficiency, right? Because once it does that, that's everything I need to go short. Next candle opens, high manipulates, runs the buy stops, aggressively breaking down. And this is what you would annotate on your 15 minute chart, right? Note how it ran the buy side and then broke down. And then from there, you go to your 15 or your five minute, excuse me. And you observe here. If you also look, this is why I, I read into these things because I'm only, I have my Monduo. The Monduo, it's like a screen extender. So I basically have three screens in front of me, which it's not my usual setup, but like I said, it's good enough for me to do what you guys see me do here today. New week opening gap. What was I seeing here that was telling me the market was turning? Look at the buys. You see how it's stopping at this new week opening gap from the month of June. Look at that. That's tipping its hand to me. That's telling me we're weak. So imagine me trying to explain all this real time. <laughs> Except if you've studied what I've taught seriously, then you'll know all these things. You'll know why I'm looking for buy stops and sell stops. You'll know how I read institutional order flow. New week opening gap, we do what body stay here. We do what we close down below it. We do what with this one. Open, trade higher, how high can it go? Here. Why did I use that mitigation block on the one minute? Anyone know? Because it overlaps the new week opening gap. So when you have a nesting or a convergence of these PD arrays, that's going to be your strong algorithmic reference points. Market drops. We trade higher. How far can we go? The mitigation block I took your attention to, but now I'm giving you another element. Why that mitigation block? Because it overlaps with an old new week opening gap, just like here. Resistance. Sells off. Gap theory, if we're bearish, get down below. Resistance. Sell off. Current new week opening gap. It's the same drill. We close down below it. What do I have to see? Resistance. Does it give it? Where are we at? Much lower. Hundreds handles lower. Right. So these aren't Mickey Mouse setups that we're doing. Right? This is real, real, real money making stuff here, folks. And then we have the new uh, low of the day. So just some additional insight. Throw that in there for you guys, uh, just for uh, additional understanding. Again, you guys obviously can see why I can't have all that on one chart, but this is just more the fundamentals of what I'm looking at. There's a lot more things that I'm reading into. But again, I can only say so much while I'm trading live in front of you guys, showing you stop placement, showing you entry, showing you how to take profit, showing you how to read order flow. I can only uh, do so much real time. So bear with me, please. <laughs> and then finally, you, you want to screenshot that, right? Like you'd maybe want to take a screenshot of that new week opening gap template that you have. Um, maybe you don't have this set up. So I'll let you get a screenshot of it. Now you guys can use mine. Take a screenshot of it if you don't have your own. All right. One. Two, three, you're going once, going twice. All right, there you go. I'll let you use mine today, but that's cheating. Over time, you want to go into your own charts and study and annotate these things. And then I have a template just for that because I read into that. And then from there, then you finalize on the one minute chart. And then you go through that exercise I just showed you. And then over time, you're going to train your eye to see what a hundred handle run looks like. How would it get down to these equal lows here and here? That's obvious. That's easy to see why it's going to want to trade into that. And then you look at what I teach you. Is it still giving bearish order flow? Absolutely. Is this gap here left open? Yes. Do we go opening gap? Yeah, we color outside a little bit of it, but are the up-close candles still being respected? Absolutely. Up-close candle, trade into it, sell off. Up-close candle here, we trade up into it. Do we overtake it? No, we don't. We sell off. So what's valid about this issue order flow? It's still valid on the downside. It's still bearish. <clears throat> All righty.
it was my intention to keep it a short one today. Get in, get paid, get you guys what you need and get you on your way. S&P, absolute dumpster fire, but nonetheless, it's still referring to its algorithmic reference points. Bearish, we get down below it. Resistance, selling off, but just real sloppy, real sloppy. NASDAQ's a better trade today. And then look at the three drives at the highs. While we're up here, giving you that narrative, and I have to be careful because sometimes I'll, I have to balance educating and explaining, because or educating, explaining, and trading. Because if I, sometimes I'll get too much into the explanation. Like I'll explain to you, well, well, what is the three drives? Why is it going on here? Why is this one not valid? Because when I'm teaching, I want you guys to understand everything. I want you guys to know why I'm going short here, why I'm not trusting a short down here, why this isn't just a pattern I look for. And because I want you guys to understand all that, when I'm trying to trade and manage my money, that can get me into some trouble sometimes. So I have to balance that. It, it is a balancing act to, 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 to do what it is I'm doing. You know, obviously doing the hardest thing in the world, but now having to teach on top of it, like I said, not the easiest thing to do. However, my focus is, and hopefully you guys can see the sincerity in that, I want you guys to understand why. Why I'm taking the trades, why I'm getting in, why I'm getting out, why I move the stop loss, why pre-market, why am I bearish pre-market? Right, Those are all things you want to go back through, take notes on, because over time, you're not going to need me to do this for you. And you're going to be doing it, like I said, on your own steam, but it's not going to come unless you put in the work and get the reps every single day of every single week. So going back to the trade here, we'll look at the executions. And it's just beautiful. Entry, cover, 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 cover here. And then covered on the deep retracement, back up, stop me out. And like I said, I'm okay with that. So another note um, for if I wanted to be more aggressive. So I used the 30 second fair value gap. I could have used in this order block here to pyramid again, or this fair value gap here, or this fair value gap here. So I could have pyramided it into a bigger position. Um, but again, because it's the last day of the trading month on what's already been an amazing trading month, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to do a whole lot, right? Again, one of the things you guys will see uh, as I pull up the trade Zella is you'll actually be surprised how much I really do to make the returns I make. I, I don't need to trade every single hour of every single day. I don't even really need to trade every day. And I'm able to hit what would be considered staggering returns in the financial industry, right? Because again, what, what we do, the way we're able to trade is such a different level compared to like these institutions, like these folks, if they do 12, and I've told you, for those of you guys that have been with me, you guys have already heard this many times, but we do have a lot of newer people in here. There's people at these institutions, if they make 15%, 12 to 15% a year, <laughs> they are jumping around their office, right? They're throwing a party, they're doing cartwheels and they're dancing. 15%. We've done that in the last two months. <laughs> so you see, it, it, it's not even a comparison. What we're able to do with this information and what is considered good by financial industry standards. It's, it's, it's a whole different ballgame that we're playing. We're on a whole nother league, on a whole nother level here. And this is how you do it. All right, guys, let me pull up the trades out of here. Uh, no screen. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Yeah because uh, I don't have the chat up because I have limited screen real estate to work with. I didn't have it up, but I appreciate all you, all you guys here. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, Nathan, thanks for demonstrating patience. Beautiful trade. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to hear um, because that's the most important things I want you guys to take away from it. Not just, you know, we made money off a of signal today. Um, the patience, right? How I wait for what I'm looking for. You guys can see, I can see all types of price runs. I saw the run higher, saw the run lower. So I'm, I can buy and sell and do all that in the same day. Generally, I have one trade I'm looking for because I want to capture a big range. So the move we're seeing now is likely going to be a sustained range to the downside. And that's generally what I want to be trading in for the most part, right? So if that's what I want to be trading in, I'm going to wait for the initial manipulation. And then I'm going to jump on the train when I see everything I want to see, the three drives pattern. What does the three drives tell me? That's offset distribution, right? Because every time it goes higher, people want to go short and they drop it. They stop them out. They drop it. They go short. They stop them out again. So now shorts are so demoralized. They're not going back in there. Imagine getting stopped out three times, <laughs> trying to go short in a premium. And then the real move happens and they're just looking at it like a deer in the headlights, <laughs> right? Not us, right? Not us, but that's what the market's designed to do. Because as people are buying the breakouts that we're selling up in that premium, we're on the opposite side of uninformed money's trade, right? And then if you see where we're at, market's not going lower, but probably going much lower based off everything we looked at pre-market, right? So that's why, again, pre-market analysis is uh, helpful to not only 
help you for targeting, but also be dialed in during the session. Can someone turn? Uh, Daniel, Dylan, where would you place a stop loss if you still had one running? Uh, for me, it would be above the most recent upclose candle. That's a good question. Let me let, let me share that. I'll get into the questions and then I'll share the uh, trade seller. So if I was still trailing above the most recent upclose, so here would be trailed, here would be trailed, would have came close, but still wouldn't have taken you out. And then upclose candle, it'd be here now. Because now this is the most recent upclose. Now that we've traded higher, that hourly fair value gap, or no, actually, no, we refined it. Remember, this is the 15 minute FEG here. So when we were bullish, reaching higher, did what? It got above, closed above, used that 15 minute fair value gap as support, expanded higher. But now that I told you guys, we're not going lower, we're going much lower down into these targets, right? Remember the levels I gave you guys on the daily, daily time frame over here? So now this fair value gap, what do we expect it to do? get down below it, use it as resistance. This is a reclaimed fair value gap. This would not be an inversion fair value gap. It's an inversion when it inverts its role and becomes bullish and uses it as support here. This is a reclaimed fair value gap. So we close below it. I'm telling you the market's going down here. So it's going to do what? Open, higher, use it as resistance. Do we reach mid gap? You see midpoint of that gap here, open, trade higher. We fail to reach that. You see that? What's that tell me? We're still weak, right? And we're still selling off. So for stop loss placement, above the most recent upclose candle. So uh, stop would be up here if I was still short. With partials obviously having been taken at all these key levels. So I'd have a stop above the most recent upclose. In my mind, um, I wouldn't want to see it come all the way back up here if we're going to be bearish. However, it all depends on how you're managing the trade. That's why I teach everything we do is independent. So if I'm managing the trade on a one-minute chart, then the stop loss makes sense to go here. But maybe you're not a one-minute trader. Maybe you're trading the five-minute. If you're trading the daily range, let's say you want to capture the rundown into here, then the stop would actually have to stay up here above the new week opening gap. You see why that works? Because if you want to capture these big ranges, you can't suffocate the stop loss. I suffocated the stop loss because I want to get out of the trade, right? I'm comfortable, I'm paid, and I'm, I, I don't have anything else that I want to really do in the market. So I'll trail the stop tight. It takes me out. I'm happy with that. If you want to capture the large ranges, then you have to get comfortable letting the stop just breathe. So if you're trying to capture the whole run down into here, then stop would have to be up here. So you see, it's all different based off what you want to do. Maybe you're not that advanced of a trader and you're not trying to hold for the whole daily range. And it'd be uncomfortable for you to get stopped out of here. Well, then if that's the case, then you're going to be managing it like this. You're going to have the stop here. It's going to have taken you out in good profit. So again, it all depends on the style of trading that you're doing, your experience. Are you trying to hold for the daily range? Or are you just trying to capture an intraday price run? There's a lot of things that influence how you manage the stop based off your trading style, based off what you're looking for and your experience level as well. Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> Tim, full target, easy trade, easy money. Love to see it, guys. If you guys are banking, drop that in the profits channel for us. Helps us out greatly. Hopefully does that answer your question, Daniel. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Matthew W. <laughs> Thanks for dropping the W. <laughs> you guys are funny. Tyler, you are close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Frank. Thanks, Dylan. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, Matthew, I was tape reading the institutional overflow entry drill at 932. How would you manage a stop loss if you were to get long from there? Stop loss here. Uh, you An aggressive stop could just be below consequent encroachment. But there's a, and that's one of the things that you have to consider is uh, if you want to take more, more trades, you have to have more of an advanced understanding. Like you can see here, this is just an easy model, right? Trades higher. We run out all the buy side. We shift market structure. It's just really easy to see that model. The risk is easy to manage. So that's why early on when you start, you start with one model. But as you get better, you're going to start to see more things. What do I mean by see more things? Well, how do I know we were likely going to turn there? Because... I'm using all these other tools to read order flow. So we have what what's here? That's a former, oh wait, let me screen share. I'm not screen share. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Be patient with me today, guys. I apologize for that. <laughs> all right, let me go back to, let's get that off of here. Go back to, all right. 
So let me share what I was looking at here. So for this fair value gap, Matthew's asking that this institutional order flow entry drill here, uh, where would stop placement go if you're long from here or if you're using this as a long? I was saying you could put the stop below consequent encroachment, right? So that would be from the low of the gap to the high of the gap, find mid gap, stop could go just below there. And let me explain why. It's one, the first fair value gap, it's leaving in a hurry and it's already close to this liquidity here. So because it's close to London highs, it's just going to accelerate and be in a hurry to get there. Because like I tell you guys, there's real traders with stop losses here. So the market's going to be in a hurry to get there because smart money wants to sell up here like we were to these buy stops. So it's going to be in a hurry to run up into there. Now, when you're looking at turning points and you want precision, you have to understand how all these key levels come together. So here we have the fair value gap. But now, what do you notice here? We have a former new week opening gap. So if we're going to get up into the London highs here, what do I need to see with this gap? I want to see it get above it, close above it. Does it do it here? Yes. Right. So now that's telling me we're bullish and we're likely going to get up into here, which is why I was able to call that for you. And then when it closes, open, drops down, how far can this candle go? Consequent encroachment. I don't want to see it drop down to the low end. So now when you look at the one minute chart here, this retracement takes on a whole new meaning now. Now it's not just retracing to a random fair value gap. It's the first fair value gap and a nested new week opening gap. So that could be an entry. Stop loss could go below consequent encroachment because you wouldn't want to see it trade through all those levels. If I'm bullish, I don't want to see us trade down through new week opening gap. Just like when I'm bearish here, right? You want to see it do what? Hit new week opening gap, sell off, it does. Trade down through it. Hit new week opening gap, uses resistance, sell off, it does. New week opening gap here, trade up to it. Resistance, sell off. I'm looking at the same thing on the buy side of the curve as I am on the sell side of the curve. So as you start to learn and put piece together everything I've laid for, out for you guys throughout this year, you're going to start to see how all this precision comes to play every single day. And so stop could be down here. Maybe you don't trust the consequent encroachment stop loss, but as you start to learn all the other factors that I look at that you can use for more precision, you'll start to see, ah, okay, that makes sense. So if you want to trade that, then you can back test it and even do the exercises that I was sharing here. And then that could be a model. Maybe over time, you can develop and add to your arsenal. Does that make sense, Matthew? <clears throat> yeah, it does. Thank you. And uh, just... Regarding your short setup that you took at like 9.55, so did you, at the time when you entered short, did you only have visibility for that short-term low at that 9.32 candle there? Um, and then is that why you took those partials and then you just kind of waited, huh? It seems like, because I'm trying, was, I took that short too with you. It's just like I'm learning to try to trust those trades that are like against these large fair value gaps, maybe on a five-minute chart. Okay, so you're saying like going short here against this large fair value gap that formed? Yeah, yeah. It was just like a bit uncomfortable. So I opt in later on and in the move. Gotcha. And that's also a model in and of itself, right? Because if this is going to be a market maker model, well, what's up here? Smart money reversal. The smart money reversal occurs with, what was I also taking your guys' attention to um, up here? We were looking at the SMT. So let me going on the center now. Let me pull up the uh, S&P real quick. We can't see your screen, by the way. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, let me get the S&P up. <clears throat> All right, that is taking forever. Let me just drag S&P over. All right, so here at the highs, S&PS was diverging, right? So S&P was unable to make a higher high here at 950. Whereas we see NASDAQ was. So we had a key SMT. Market broke down. That This is the smart money reversal in the market maker sell model that creates the SMT. I sold the low risk sell. The low risk sell is usually going to be institutional or full entry drill and a breaker. Because it makes sense. Breakers are reversal patterns. It's going to happen at the high end of the PD array matrix. Fair value gap breaker. This could also be an entry here, right? Because now this is going to be what? Um, Smart money reversal, low risk sell, first stage distribution, second stage distribution here to the downside. So you can trade short the smart money reversal, number one, low risk sell, number two, first stage distribution, second stage distribution, bam, into the original consolidation here. 
So either one of those could be your model. So it's about which one you trust, because maybe you don't trust getting short way up here in a premium. Maybe you want to see it decisively break down. You can still use the fair value gap. If you understand the market maker model, like I taught, mitigation block, you could enter with a fair value gap, stop above the mitigation block, and then target the lows, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can tackle this. It's just about finding which one makes the most sense to you and where you're comfortable. Because I'm able to see this early. Personally, the turtle soup isn't my style. Like I'm anticipating the turtle soup up here. But personally, I just like to have it confirmed by a breakdown. So once we break down decisively, shift market structure, I'm trusting it a lot more there. So it's really just a matter of what you're looking for, what makes the most sense to you in your current understanding. Over time, you'll develop and you're going to be more like me anticipating the smart money reversal here and then jumping all over the low risk cell. But it's again, a graduated growing process. Make sense? <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Trading with precision. You see, it requires a lot of elements uh, to be pulled into the analysis, which is why when I'm mentoring and I'm doing an official mentorship, it takes me a lot of months to communicate everything I look at in a very systematic and organized way. Because you can see there's a lot of things I'm doing in my analysis. It may feel complicated at first. Maybe some you guys may be new here as well. It may feel complicated, but if you show up, take notes. There's folks that have been in here for nine months that can already finish my sentences for me. Like my man, Tyler. Um, Matthew asked, what stop loss would I use? Already knows. That's not an accident. This is a transferable skill set that I'm able to give to other people and I already have many, but it's hard work that gets you there. Doing these reps, doing the journaling, and most aren't mentally strong enough to stay with it. Most break mentally because it takes a lot of hard work to get to this point. And it doesn't take four years like a university degree, but it definitely does take one to two years to start seeing results. But that's one to two years of serious work, not one to two years of goofing around. I'm saying one to two years of doing what I'm doing here with you guys every day, going live, you watching the live streams, then you, at the end, journaling it, right? Just like I'm showing you guys getting the reps. And over time, you're going to get to a point to where you can acquire the skill set and trade at a higher level. But it does not come by accident and it comes through hard, intentional work, which is what it is that I'm laying down the blueprint for you guys to understand. And that's my intention with what I'm doing here. I know there's a lot of bullshit out there and I was a victim of it early on in my career. And I know many of you guys have been as well. So that's why I'm looking to be that breath of fresh air, raise the standard in the trading industry. To what this should start looking like because uh it's <laughs> love uh, what ICT is saying it's closing time for all the all the furus as they say now <laughs> oh man tim uh full target easy trade easy money thank you dylan appreciate you joining brother carla thanks dylan great session awesome glad you enjoyed it jono first day here got my 30 handle short thank you dylan awesome jono non-farm payroll week stay paid stay green and we'll be doing it the month of october all over again all right, let me go and get my trades Zella pulled up, share what I had to share there, and then I will be getting on my way here today. screenshots taken appreciate you guys bearing with me here a little clumsy when i have to do everything on just uh on just the main setup all right now where'd the zoom thing go
All right, guys, one second. I don't know where the screen share thing went. It's like my first day on Zoom here. <laughs> All right, meeting. Oh, okay, there we go. Sure. Okay. All right, there it is. All right, so you guys should be able to see the trade Zella here. Okay, perfect. All right. So looking at the AMP live again, this is the one I trade live in front of you guys. So today's September 30th. So it's not going to reflect. Um, today's trade that was taken, of course, but nonetheless, it still completes the method of what it is I want to communicate um, to you guys. So AMP live, this is the whole month of September. You're going to see red days in there. You're going to see days where even I may go out of my rules. Right? Here, four trades. Don't like that as much. Six trades, but I stay within my risk. So what I will do if I go over three trades a session, but the risk is still managed very well and like I'm break even, I'll come back in the PM session and then I'll have another three bullets that I'm able to shoot. So I'm limited to three trades per session. So um, just want to emphasize that there. But here's the main takeaway from this year. It's not that there's no losing trades, right? Because you'll see here a 50% win rate. I'm not happy with that. Right? I'm not content with a 50% win rate, but you can still see 50% win rate brings in 8.7%. And then add, you can add on a little bit to that from today's trade. So what does 9% mean to you? Well, on a 50K funded account, that would be a $4,500 payday. On a $100,000 funded account, that's a $9,000 payday or month, monthly, monthly payout. On a $200,000 account, 9% is... 18,000 on a million dollars of funding, 9% becomes 90 K $90,000. So 90% or 9% isn't a lot of money because it's not money. It's a percent and it's all relative to the size you're trading at. So if you're doing these numbers on capital, a lot of opportunities available, let's say you do two to 3%, which is what I teach newer traders to aim for developing traders that may not have all their consistency or have all that consistency for that much time, rather, should aim for 1% to 3% a month. If you can do 1% to 3% a month consistently, then start aiming for 3% to 6% a month. After doing 3 to 6 and then you can start hitting for what I generally aim for is 6 to 10% a month. I, that's where I'm looking to hit. And as long as I'm within that, that's where I'm looking to strive for. I don't always reach it every month, though. So I always want to emphasize that to you guys as well. I don't want you to think every month I'm getting nine to 10% returns. Some months I only get 2%, 3%. Sometimes it's not a great month and I break even, right? That happens as well. But the key is if you keep the losing months small, the losing weeks small and the losing days small, the wins are always gonna outrun the losers. And this is how you have a consistent upward sloping equity curve. That's not a roller coaster, not like a heart attack. It's nice and smooth. And what you'll notice is I'm not even having to trade every day, right? I've traded a bit more here this, these past two weeks because like I told you guys, moving isn't cheap and I pay for things with my own trading, right? Not a lot, not a lot of uh, influencers saying that, right? <laughs> so I had to pick up the pace a little bit on my end with the trading. However, if you look again, not everyday trading, there's red days in here, right? There's days where I have to stop and even red weeks, like the third week uh, for this account specifically um, was, was a red week for me. From when I just traded live with you guys, it was green based off the trades I took live, but I took a couple extra trades in the PM session because I saw something I liked, but hey, it just denied it to me and I had a red week here for this particular account. I was still green because you guys know I'm doing a lot of different things with my trading, but that's a whole nother conversation. But I want to show you guys, look, there's even weeks where maybe the market takes from me and I'm not able to take from it. But what I don't do is allow that to put me on till. I don't try to make it all back on Friday before market close. I don't try to make it all back on Monday real quick. I just follow the model. I follow the plan. And as long as I do that each week, each month, each year, I can expect consistent returns. And again, what you're seeing here is a derivative of, is the result of everything I share, everything my man Tommy shares to you guys, not only knowing how to make, but also how to keep, how to protect what you're making, right? And those are all the habits we show you guys here. Because again, it's not just, well, let me get a payout. Well, how's your family, how's your future family, wherever you're at in life, going to live off a lottery payout? 
it doesn't work like that. You need to have consistent long-term consistency. How do you get long-term consistency? The habits that we teach you guys every single week here. Costa, hey Dylan, should we calculate the same for prop firm since we only have 2K a drawdown or we count the percent of the 2K? That is a phenomenal question. So with prop firms, that would be way too much risk for a prop firm. Like I have days where I'm losing one and a half percent, one percent. That's not a whole lot for a live account, especially with the numbers I'm doing. With a funded account, that would end you though, because what, if you take a one and a half percent loss and you're calculating that on the entire equity, that's half of your equity gone. So what I recommend for prop firms, that's a bit of a different approach. What I would recommend is, well, there's, there's a lot of different things to be considered. And now I think of it, it's really dependent on experience level, how much you should be risking. If you haven't been consistent making money month to month, then in my opinion, you should be still trading micros, maybe one to two micros on a 50K account. Because if you can't with one to two micros, build it up to a thousand and then 2000, you're really just asking to blow up with a mini. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is because even like, let's say two micros on the NASDAQ, you take that trade I took today. Let's say you just closed them all out at 50 points, not even the 70 point best case target. Let's just say 50 points, right? 50 points is something we pull out of the market really consistently. So let's say you do 50 points on two micros. That's 200 bucks. You do that five times. And if you're, if you learn what it is that we do here, that's really easy to do. It's really easy to do 50 handles once a week, twice a week. And then that 200 grows the account. So let's say two micros for, for math, 50 point target, $200. Let's say you do that 10 times. Now you have $2,000 of profit. And then that can turn into what? Now three micros. So now what's 200 becomes 300. And then as that grows, then you do four micros. And then as the account grows, and now you had a $4,000 balance, now you can do five micros. And then as it grows from there, then you can start doing a mini, but it's just all about growing nice and steady. Everyone blows up because they try to do too much too quick. The way you get different results is by thinking differently. If you think like the crowd, you're gonna get the results like the crowd gets. If you think differently, if you learn how to move slow when it comes to trying to make a lot of money, but move real fast when it comes to protecting that equity. Because what that's gonna do is allow you to grow in a consistent, sustainable way, which most traders don't do. Most traders see a little bit of victory, a little bit of money, get lucky. And then, well, man, now this is really easy. Let me do a lot more because now I just made 300 bucks, but now I'm not really happy with that $300. So let me just make it 600, right? We've all fell into that trap. The way you avoid that is what I'm sharing here. You take it slow and you don't be in a rush because, okay, 200 bucks, that's not a lot of money. Okay, well now do 200 bucks and do five accounts on top step. Now you're doing a thousand bucks a day. Not a lot of day jobs are paying that. So you see what I'm saying? It's all scalable. But first, you need the skill set. Once you have the skill set, then you can scale it beyond your wildest dreams. But you first need the skill set of making consistent setups with what it is that we're doing. So I know that was a long, drawn out way to answer your question, Costa, but there's a lot of things that have to have considered. And I wouldn't be happy if I just gave you a half-assed answer and uh, left it at that. So I want to give you the full panoramic understanding as to how you can consider risk and how you can weigh out all those factors. So if that makes sense, Costa. Uh, makes sense. The way I'm looking at it is I say I make 500 a month. I made 25%. Would that math be right? So yes, I mean, technically you've made 25% of the $2,000 balance um, that you're able to trade with, with these prop firms. So that wouldn't be a bad calculation. It's just all about how, how it is that you want to look at it, how, how, how it makes the most sense to you. Um, so if calculating it just based off the equity you have makes the most sense or looking at it in percentage terms based off the whole account, you know, it's all up to what, what makes the most sense to you. But yes, the, the math would technically be right. And if that makes the most sense to you, then keep doing it like that. But the main takeaway is move slow. Don't be in a rush to try to do too much, get to a payout quickly. That's where everybody does it wrong. You have no idea how many people I've trained. Learn what I teach. Do it very well for a couple of days. Get funded, maybe even get close to a payout. And then just blow it all.
And it's because then we try to do way too much too quick. So that's the main takeaway. However you calculate it, as long as it makes sense to you, that that's the key. And um, what you shared, absolutely spot on. Leon, I said done. I said that's that's some good trading, brother. That is some good trading. Getting in the drawdown, working your way out of it. Nice, smooth, controlled, and a nice, smooth, upsloping equity curve. I love to see it, Leon. Matthew, um, I like that good rule of thumb. Dylan has said, if you want 10 trades before you lose an account, so the maximum $3,000 drawdown, 300 trade, keeps the emotions calm. That's a great point as well. So you can also calculate risk as my man Matthew here saying. Let's say uh, you're doing a uh, $2,000 worth of drawdown, so that'd be a $50,000 account and you're risking 200. Well, the way I would look at it before when I was first, first starting, now I, I don't really think about challenges. I go in, I, I trade a lot of leverage and I just pass them. Like that's what I do. If I feel it, I, I don't care. It's not ruining my psychology. It's not causing me issues. So that's how I do it. I don't really want to waste time because for me, time is money. So if I'm spending, you know, two months trading a challenge, then that's just a lot of wasted opportunity for me personally. But again, it's taken me a long time to get to this point where I'm not swayed emotionally by those factors. So hopefully you guys can see why I'm okay doing that, but why I don't recommend that. Because if you haven't been consistent for months and years, you know, maybe you blow a funded account, that's going to hurt you psychologically and you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So as I was saying, a good way to calculate risk as well, an additional way to think about it would be, let's say you have $2,000 of risk on a 50 k account. Well, if you only risk $200 per trade, now you have 10 trades to lose the account. And, you know, if you lose 10 trades in a row and lose the account, I just, just reset it. It's good money management. You lost 10 trades in a row and, you know, just reset it, reset it at that point. <laughs> but if you're developing, maybe you just want to risk a hundred uh, trade. And now it takes you 20 trades to lose the account, right? So there's different ways of thinking about it. The key is to think about where's your experience level? Where does it make sense for you to be at? And you have to be very honest with yourself and then make a trading plan around that. And then from there, you'll start to excel because now you're trading with where your experience level, where your skill level's at. And you're not trying to do too much, which is where everybody blows it. Excellent questions today, guys. R really got me uh, got me thinking here today and giving you guys some good insights. Really good questions today, guys. All righty, folks. I see the questions starting to simmer down. I will be getting going. We will be live tomorrow morning. Uh, on Tuesday. So first day of October, start of quarter four. And we're looking to close up the year, close up shop real nicely here to door trading. So with that, guys, hope you have a phenomenal rest of your day. We'll be live tomorrow morning, bright and early. And I'm sure it'll be just as amazing as usual. Take care, guys. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, Profits Channel Ify Bank, by the way, helps us out greatly. Appreciate you guys. See you, Grisha. Thank you, Matthew. Absolutely, Leon. You take care as well, brother. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>